Welcome Wargamers to the spicy hot magma holds of the mortal realms because today we are talking about the fire slayers. One series of videos that I really wanted to touch on is as these new third edition battle tomes are coming out that specifically have references to Alariel's Rite of Life, the massive ritual that basically cleaned up the Necroquake and introduced the era of the beast by freeing Kragnos. Well, that had a ripple effect on literally every single faction in the game, and so as these battle tomes are coming out, they almost all have a little story snippet about how those events affected them. And the Fire Slayers are no different. This is definitely a faction I have talked multiple times that I just, I love. I love the Fire Slayers. I think they need a little bit of model diversity in terms of they should have like a mount of some kind. I don't know what that would look like personal love would be to have like two-man fulminator style units but they're just riding like baby magma draws that'd be kind of cool but i'm getting off topic because today we're talking about how the right of life affected the fire slayers and this comes straight out of the uh, latest fire slayer battle tome from their kind of timeline section it's the last story there because it's the most recent narrative note and it's called fulminating energies now really quickly before we jump into that story if you are interested in this faction or Age of Sigmar at all, please consider using the affiliate link in my description down below. Not Just Gaming is an awesome store here in the US without the 30% off Games Workshop products. It's an incredible way to save money. And using that link is, goes a long way to supporting me as a content creator, my wife, our cats, this channel, everything. It's life-changing stuff and I am so grateful for all of you. So with that out of the way, let's jump into today's story, Fulminating Energies. In Gyran, Alariel works a great ritual that unleashes a tsunami of life magic across the realms. This crashing wave strikes at the fabric of Akshi, and though its energies are those of creation rather than destruction, the Fire Slayers know well that both can be devastating. Across the Great Parch and beyond, masses of volcanoes violently erupt, drowning several magma holds and the Sigmarite strongholds of Ender's Peak and Ashcliff in floods of lava. More concerning still, the Zargrim of Varstagi Mont sends a magmic presence stirring somewhere deep beneath the magma hold, an elemental force that grows more powerful with every passing day. So we got a lot to unpack here. First is the ritual itself, and then there's this sort of like question mark open-ended conversation about what's going on in the Volstark Lodge. So we'll get to those here. Let's, let's break them down bit by bit. The Ritual of Life is described, much as I kind of sped through it earlier, it's a, a shock wave of life magic hitting every single realm. And what that looks like in, in various locations can be very different. So when it hit Gur, for example, where it's full of very vibrant wildlife and constant predator-prey relationships and very tangled and messed up food chains, all of that life, you know, all the animals had more offspring, they became more hunty, you know, they just like, the life just magnified around them. All their babies grew big and strong, way faster, and the overall flora and fauna just became incredibly dangerous. Well, in Akshi, that same thing would happen. Any naturally occurring uh, animal species or, you know, plants that seem, seem, almost seem to be like living, you know, carnivorous plants type thing, all of those would be magnified as well, but Akshi's not really a, a realm that's renowned for its wildlife. A lot of it is covered in blood because corn has poisoned a whole lot of it, and, and then a whole portion of it is just like ash and volcanoes and stuff. There are, of course, forests and things, but they're not the norm. So what does the life quake, as we're going to call it, affect in Akshi? Well, it is, like it's stated in the story, a, a magical act of creation. And just as animals will suddenly have, you know, bursting forth with offspring and their numbers will replenish and grow and all these kinds of great things, so too does volcanic activity, because what is volcanic activity if not the birth of new nations, land masses, all these kinds of things. And so all of the volcanoes in Akshi, or at least a massive swath of them, like detonate, like together. Now I've talked about on this, sh on this channel before how much I love the Fire Slayers because they use naturally existing, you know, rock and lava formations and volcanoes within their own structures. They call them magma holds is what the technical term for a Fire Slayer home base is. But there are some things that when you just crank the laws of nature like beyond anything reasonable that those defenses and the way that you have lived with nature becomes completely imbalanced. 
So maybe one magma hold had, you know, a, a, a nice stable river of flowing lava, which is used to heat up their anvils and that kind of stuff, or whatever they use, blacksmithing things. Forge, that's the word I'm looking for. You know, but maybe they had a nice lava river that was diverted to, to heat up what they needed, but then the lava stays away. Well, what happens if that all of a sudden goes from being a trickle, a stream of magma, to a rushing, raging river? We don't get a sense of how many lodges were destroyed or how many people died. Because remember, they might just be able to escape. I mean, this is a thing that they have built and survived around for a long time. But regardless, if the hold goes away, they're still displaced and alone in a very dangerous setting. It also name drops two specific places that are essentially free cities, right? Sigmarite Stronghold, so we're thinking, you know, these could be Dawnbringer Crusades. These have been referenced in other stories and on maps in Age of Sigmar, but we know that it definitely wiped out Ender's Peak and Ashcliff. Which, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ender's Peak came up in the Rumgate Wars. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And now we get to what I think is the juiciest bit. And I'm just going to reread a section here. Um, more concerning still, the Tsar Grim, so that's the priesthood, the people who are most in tune with uh, the Urgold and the nature of heat and magma, basically yeah, the religious sect of um, the Fire Slayer Order, of the Volstargi Mont. So this is the home base of the Volstarg Lodge. It's a location, not a, a sub-faction. Since a magmic presence stirring somewhere deep beneath the magma hold and its elemental force that grows more powerful with every passing day. So let's speculate wildly, right? Let's put on our, our tinfoil caps, our, our magma-proof tinfoil caps, and get into the thick of it. I think a perfectly reasonable conclusion is that there is a massive deposit of Akshi Realmstone underneath Verstagimont, and that it is becoming a sentient incarnate of Akshi. Just, and I, I simply say that because that's kind of the, the trend that Games Workshop has been doing, right? The first one was the incarnate of Gur, of course, but it does stand to reason, and they've said explicitly that there are incarnates of every realm. All it needs to have is just a large enough piece of realm stone to kind of anchor that monster in reality. So as we're trying to think of things, well, what would be under a giant, timeless mountain that the Fire Slayers have lived in for dang near forever? Well, certainly Realmstone deposits a naturally occurring one. It would obviously lend its abilities and power to being a really suitable location for Fire Slayers and their forges and everything. I think that would make the most sense. But we're not here for sense, people. We're Warhammer fans. We're into big hats and weapons that don't make sense. So, let's be stupid. I think the could also say that maybe Grimnir is reforging an ancient magmic presence. Uh, elemental force is also how it's described. All those things are also associated with, with Grimnir, and maybe not even him necessarily, but some kind of fragment of his essence is starting to rebuild underneath the Volstark Lodge. It would actually make sense that if he is coalescing somewhere, why not put it underneath one of the most heavily fortified and defensible, you know, strongholds of your people? That, that's not crazy. Other options that have existed in AOS, it could be um, a god beast on par with Vulcatrix, the mother of all magma droths, but something akin to that, maybe more magma themed than uh, just more instead of more lizardy. And then I'm just going to make something up because I want it to exist. And I'm going to say fire gobos, uh, goblin subterranean gloom spike gits that are all wreathed in flame and fire from Akshi. That if I could make my own Warcry warband, it would be something like that. Just just to be stupid, maybe like self imploding, uh, or self immolating rather, uh, grots to run up and down. Of course, I don't think anyone would describe the gloom spike gits as an elemental force. You know that kind of primordial power that's underneath something. But you know, if we're just spitballing, that's what I want. As I said, I think the most sensical thing is the incarnate of Akshi. And so it wouldn't surprise me if the narrative shifted to whenever it gets around, you know, off of Gur into other realms, if it focuses on Akshi, that the story involving it, just like we had the story of the Thondia books where we had a little bit of a tale where the Stormcasts were chasing the Cruel Boys and there were some bone splitters there and they kind of you know, all collectively discovered the incarnate of Gur at the same time, do the same thing, except now we can have heroes who are the first ones to find it, you know, good guys, quote unquote, and it could be the Fire Slayers. Volstar Galaj are good guys. So, you know, it could be they're just setting up the next release in the next model. It would be a great little narrative plot line just to kind of pull that thread forward whenever they get around to Akshi. Makes perfect sense to me. But I want to end this video talking about why is this cool? That's how I love to end all my videos. Just asking a very simple question. 
What makes this story interesting? Well, for one, this is the only perspective on the right of life uh, that we have where they really do see it as both an act of, they understand the difference between an act of creation and destruction. That there's a duality there, but they're both dangerous. Like the other ones have always talked about, like, so for example, the Deepkin story is like, oh yeah, and then a bunch of fish came and now things are more awesome because we have all this wildlife around us and our coral grows better. Whereas the fire slayers are like, this is a this is a two-headed snake here. Yeah, life improves if you're like animal-based or something like that. But for those of you who exist in already hazardous conditions, all it does is make the threat level go higher. So yeah, even though Alariel, who is a, you know, a quote unquote good guy side, you know, character, she does the right of life and Ostensibly, it should be cool. You would think thumbs up would be all around, but there are tons of sub factions within the Pantheon of Order that are like, no, like that is so, it's, it's destructive, even if it's meant to be creative. And anytime, anytime a good character, you know, again, strong air quotes around good, anytime a good character does a thing that has negative repercussions on their allies, I love that stuff because it's just the cracks and the tension. And so when people are like, how come our you know, two order armies would be fighting each other? There's tons of reasons for that. Like think of, think about that if, if so, let's say either Grimnir if he's put back together or Gotrek if they ever ascend him to being the complete and total fire slayer deity level character. But let's say they get into a room with Alariel. Well, she killed, you know, or at least started the chain of events that would have ultimately killed probably thousands of fire slayers, eliminated hundreds and hundreds of years of history and knowledge and commerce and all these things. Like, it just wipes the slate clean because all of these volcanoes detonated and they were fine. You could have just left them alone. Now, of course, that's not how Alariel sees it. It's not how many of the characters would see it, that... You know, the bigger issue was reversing the Necroquake and stuff. Like, there's tons of reasons on both sides, but it's the tension between factions that makes stories like this interesting. The fact that you can have a perspective where the fire, fire slayers, rather, say, screw this, we're not part of order. Like, you guys don't care about us. You dealt a serious blow for no reason. There was no enemy at our gates where we had to detonate them. You know, like uh, Stormcast blowing up rum gates just to shut the door basically none of that was going on but we just got iced as a side effect of something you were trying without our permission or knowledge that's the kind of stuff i like in stories now if you are a fire slayer in uh third edition or fire slayer player rather if you're actually a fire slayer hey what's up let's interview but if you're a player of fire slayers in age of sigmar 3.0 i would love to know your thoughts like uh, if you have your own custom lore for your own magma hold how did the necroquake affect it it's so easy to think that, you know, their homes would be so far removed that none of this would affect them. They can just ride it out like they did the Age of Chaos. And then things like this happen where nobody has a, a chance to sit on the sidelines. There is no safe place. And so how we respond to it really defines the character of your faction. So if you have your own, I would love to know your lore. What do you think about the right of life and how it pertains to the Fire Slayers? And what is your theory for what is beneath Volstargi Mun? What is our elemental force that grows daily? Leave your theories in the comments down below. I will read them and respond to them. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And I will catch you next time in my next Age of Sigmar lore video. Happy Wargaming.